All right, so, you know, what we're going to talk about today, CJ, is the ability to move over a chunk of land from point A to point B using a map compass protractor. So basic land navigation. It's a dying art. It's a dying art, man. We live in a battery operated world now. Everybody is dead set on technology and we have become like uber reliant on technology. Right. I mean, just uber reliant. So um, it's, it's almost like an anachronism. I don't even know how much the military is going into this stuff because really? everything's, pow yeah, everything's, everything's powered by a battery. It's, I know it's not as prevalent anymore to get back to the basic fundamentals of map reading as it was days of yore. So I just kind of want to broad stroke it, not get in the weeds with any of this stuff. We need, don't need to get super complicated with it. I just want to see if I could teach you how to uh, understand a map, a compass, and then we're going to actually move from point A to point B, plot another point, move from that point to another point. Let me ask you something. If this is a dying art, I know you've got a reason. It's more than just for hobby's sake mm -hmm. or just to be nostalgic. Why is this important then if everything's going digital? I mean, what if, you know, we have that instance where all power is out? Right. How are we going to move ourselves from one point to another? I mean, you know me, I carry maps in my, in my vehicles. Right. Uh, all my state maps and then adjoining state maps. Uh, and then... Um, but yeah, it, it, I mean, it's a hobby for me, but it may become necessary in the event that we have some kind of, not necessarily cataclysmic event, but event that shuts the power off. Yeah, if you don't have any concept of what the word navigation itself means, mm -hmm. For some people, navigator is like a feature on a car. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's the name of an actual vehicle, the right. Ford, whatever the heck mm -hmm. they are. You know what I mean? But, yep. but this is... Because they're trying to sound cool. Right. So like, you know, I'm sure we'll get into the different things of terrain, how, what, how to read that on a map and all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. But knowing the lay of land, knowing right. what you're on and how to, like you said, move from point A to point B. Yep. And yeah, I think it's an, it's an important, we'll call it primitive skill only because it's a dying art. Right. But I think it's important to know. Uh, now, here in North Carolina, especially this chunk of North Carolina, like the Sand Hills portion, we don't have a lot of terrain. Right. But it's usable enough. We could use terrain association to help us identify where we are on the ground. Right. Now, that being said, I want to talk a little about these things right here. So I have a map of the area that we're in right here. So this quadrangle is called the Southern Pines Quadrangle. There's a, something called the UTM system, the Universal Transverse Mercator Grid System. It breaks the earth down into sections, into uh, quadrants and into quadrangles. On the globe itself, you have, you know, the equator, meridian, and then the earth is broken down into chunks like this. And they're much closer than this, of right, course, sure. much closer. But we, you know, are somewhere like right in here, right. as far as like the uh, East Coast United States goes. Uh, and that is a, um, it's a, a grid zone, grid zone identifier. And this chunk right here, let's say we have the United States. I'm sorry if I'm goofing up your states here. Yeah. So, and then the United States is broken down further into smaller chunks. So we are right here. And that is our 100,000 meter grid zone identifier. So what this map, the area that we are in is known as 17 Sierra Papa Uniform. So that's our, our grid zone designator and our 100,000 meter uh, square identifier. So those are, those are important to know, but for what we're doing today, not super necessary. We, we really right. don't need to get into the weeds on that. <clears throat> All right, so the map has marginal information. Doesn't mean it's not important. Right. Let's <laughs> see what you did there. Just means, means it's in the margin. And there's certain things we should know. For instance, the quadrangle name, right? The Southern Pines Quadrangle. 
And then here in, in the bottom are also things that we should know. For instance, declination diagram, okay. which uh, tells us the difference between grid north, true north, and magnetic north, because there's three different norths. Correct. So these lines, see these faint yellow lines right here? Mm -hmm. Those are grid lines. And the grid lines are, are um, grid north. Magnetic north, of course, is what the compass shows us, and that points to the magnetic fields. And then true north is north star. Polaris. The next thing we have is a scale. Now, this is a one over 24 thousands scale map, which means for every uh, inch on the map, there are 24,000 inches on the Earth. Wow. Yep. So this is what is called a large scale map. If we nav done a small scale map, like a one over 250 thousands, very difficult. Right. Very difficult. It gives you kind of more big picture. Yep. The larger scale we can go, the better, the easier it is for us to navigate. The other thing that uh, we have is, um, you know, our distance, right? So we're going to be navigating off of meters and kilometers. Uh, and then the, uh, the next thing is our contour interval, which contour interval on this is 10 feet, which means all of these brown lines right. are called contour lines. And from one to the next represents 10 feet in elevation. Wow. And these tell us the, the lay of the land, the read of the land, these contour lines. And we'll talk about that when we get to a specific terrain features. Uh, the next thing we have is a joining map sheet diagram. So ours is the one in red right here. And it, if we wanted to order adjoining map sheets, like what is four, what is one? Right. It tells us right there you know, what the adjoining map sheets are. And I have actually, on the flip side of this, I have an adjoining map for this chunk. So I have, I believe what I have is number five, which is Niagara on this side. Not that we're going there, but do, boom, Niagara qu quadrangle. Right. We're not going there. We're just gonna stay on this little teeny chunk. All right. Now, as we talked about in some of the Patreon videos, there's a big difference between land navigation and orienteering. Yeah. Uh, short distances like this, we're going to want to land nav. So, uh, pace count, uh, azimuth heading, uh, things like that. Instead of orienteering, where we might be going 10 kilometers in a movement, where we're using cone of direction, boundaries, overshoot points, and checkpoints. So that's where we are on the Death Star. Right <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we need to learn how to do is we need how to plot a point or a grid coordinate. Now, <clears throat> we currently, I wrote it down, what we want to do is find our location. I know our location's at this grid coordinate right here. All right, so this is an eight digit grid coordinate, which will bring us to within 10 meters of our location. Right. What it starts with is our 1,000 meter grid zone, right? So 4699. So we have lines of latitude and longitude on this map, and they're all designated with a numeric value. Okay. So we are in 4699. 4699. So we're in this chunk right here, that one right there. Now, but that only brings us to within 1,000 meters of our known location right. or a point on which we want to travel. That's not close, mm -mm. 1,000 meters. That's a kilometer. So we need to get closer than that. So that's where the next ones come in, that 3835. And we're going to use our protractor to help us uh, get a little closer to that location. So it's a coordinate scale and protractor which has degrees on it and different scaled maps. We are using a one over 24,000. I don't know if you can see that, the camera, but we're using this one right here. So the one over 24,000, that's the one we're gonna use. So we wanna line this up using the one over 24,000 scale on 4699. So 4699, put that 
right along 99, this one over 24,000 scale. And then we're gonna slide it over to 38 and 35. So anyway, our point is right in about there. So that's our location right there, right, on this map. That's 46389935, right about in this chunk. Now, if you look around, this is kind of interesting. You see that there's a stream right here? Right. See that intermittent stream? But if you look over here, you'll see sort of like a swamp or a pond. Terrain over time changes a little bit. The lay of the land doesn't so much, but height of trees, whether it's been clear cut, whether it's clear now, whether it's overgrown, whether buildings have been put up. This right here happens to be a beaver dam. Huh. So the beavers are making a pond. Right, right. So you look in your map, you see a stream when in fact there's a pond here, but it's just a, just a beaver dam. So it's still just an intermittent stream. Damn beavers. Damn beavers, bro. Mm -hmm. The next thing we want to do is plot to where we're going. We're going to that one. So same grid square, but different coordinates. So gotcha. it's not that far from here. I'll use this small map here to show. So we want to go 4699 and then 3575. So I'm going to use my protractor again on my 1 over 24,000 scale and go 35. there to seven five which is right about in here so it's right along that hilltop so <clears throat> the map shows us terrain features these circles designate hilltops circles like that these are all hilltops and then as we go into certain terrain, I'll describe to you what low ground looks like on a map, what high ground looks like on a map. What direction is that though? You know, what is the azimuth? Okay, what's the azimuth? Right, the azimuth is that the, the heading of the compass, the degrees, okay. you know, so 360 degrees in a right, circle. Right. What are we going to set this to so that we could use this as a guide to get us there? Okay. So first off, we're gonna use our protractor. We're gonna make sure that it's straight up and down, you know, so that we're reading it as it should be because now we have the degrees. So you see zero, right, and 180. So zero, five, 90, 180, etc., cetera, all the way around. So we're gonna set this on our current location, making sure that we are lined up with both the lines of latitude and longitude. I'm gonna use this string, this gutted 550 cord, mm -hmm. to intersect with our next point. So it looks to be about 16 degrees, right? So 16 degrees. So we're gonna write that on our board here so I can talk about the next thing. So 16 degrees, that's gonna be our heading, okay. 16 degrees. Now. I just plotted that using grid north, grid north. But not true north. Not magnetic north. Okay. So that's where the um, declination diagram comes in. So we have uh, 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 true north, grid north, magnetic north. Okay. So <clears throat> what these declination diagrams do is they tell us the difference in degrees. Okay. Yep. So on this one right here, we could see that it is eight degrees, which means we have an eight degree difference between magnetic north and grid north, right? Eight degree difference. So we have to figure that. Yes. And the rule of thumb here, not Ulrich. <laughs> so is uh, Lars, left, add, right, subtract. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the magnetic declination to our um, magnetic north to give us 
our, to our grid north to give us our magnetic north. So we know we're at 16 degrees and we know it's eight, right, is our... Right, so we want to follow magnetic north so that we can now use this right. to, to guide us in conjunction with the map. Correct, so we need to go We need to nav on an azimuth or a heading of 24 degrees. So using our compass, we're gonna move our bezel ring to 24 degrees, right about somewhere in there. And then just as a guide, we're gonna utilize it in conjunction with the map. So we're gonna move on a heading of 24 degrees. The next question becomes, how far is it? How far is it from here to here? Okay. You know, so that's the so next big from question. 38 to 35. Right, from 38 to 35. So we could use this protractor right here because it's got scale on it as well. Right? So we use our one over 24 scale right there. Right. Because each one of these is 100 meters. One, two, three, four, five, etc. So all we need to do is utilize it with the map Put it on, I'm just gonna put it on one. So we need to travel one, two, three, about 400 meters to get to that point. It's gonna take forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a short distance, right? It's about 400 meters. Now here's, here's the question, how do we gauge that distance? We can't just wing it, you know? We can't just say, well, it's about 400 meters, let's just walk and we'll know when we get there. So it's good at this point to have like a, uh, a pace count. In orienteering, we're gonna use time, speed, and distance. Right. Like we should know how, far, how, how long it takes us to travel 1,000 meters over varying terrain. Okay. But in this case, short distances, we're gonna use a pace count. So we have to establish yours. Ah. So this is how we're gonna establish your pace count. So from here, you see that lone pine? That's not obscured by other scrub oaks and stuff. You can see the base right of it. Right there, yeah. Yep, straight ahead, that direction. That's 100 meters. Okay. Right there. So what you need to do is you need to walk one, two, three, counting every other okay. foot until you get to that spot. Now going there, it's slightly uphill. Coming back, it's slightly downhill. So you're going to have two different ones. Okay. Uh, just remember that one and then start over from zero. Back down to here, okay, remember so that one. Is my first, my first step with the left will be counted? Yep, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, 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 it's every other step, so. Okay, so, all right, so I'll step One. Up. Okay, so yep. Yep. this would be one. Yep, okay, right. Gotcha. Yep, so you go ahead and do that. All right, here yep. I go. Yep. <laughs> one, two, three. Four, uh, my guess is he'll five, be at like 60, six, seven, I think eight, 66, nine, maybe 68. Ten. Could be more. 11, 15, 8, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. <laughs> I was off my, by my guess. It was 59 up. Yep. And 58 back. Let's split the difference. 58.5. I'm ready to teach my class on orienteering, Mac. Yep. <laughs> so uh, average around, what, 58? 58, 58, 58 yeah. 58-ish. All right, so the other thing I did is I fashioned you with a little, with some ranger beads. <laughs> <laughs> now, those should go up higher, like on a lapel, but we're not wearing right. fatigues or anything like that. And those aren't beads. They're actually grommets, but I'll take what I can get. Because sure. I, the, the, when, you're, when we're hoofing, let's say... Uh, 1500 meters or something like that you're counting 100 15 times and you're probably going to lose track of that okay so these as you go 100 you're going to slip one down 100 meters 200 meters 300 meters 400 meters okay so how do i know i've done? gone 100 meters because you've counted to, in your movement you counted to 58 okay oh, that's right yep all right so yep. if i count if i so i got to be counting this whole time yep holy shit yep 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 when we're doing land navigation, you got to be counting the okay. whole time because it's important that we don't go past our uh, our designated point. 
100 meters. Ah, mm -hmm. ah, ah. Yep. So now what we have is we know how to use this, and we're going to follow it this way. And we know how many meters it is. It's so about 400 meters. So we're following which north? Magnetic we're, north? We're following magnetic north. Because okay. we, we already went from grid to magnetic. Yeah, we've already made the adjustment. We went to grid to magnetic, so left add. So we've added those eight degrees. So we're going to move at 24, at 24 degree. degrees. Okay. So before we move out, one of the things we want to do is just kind of take a big, big look at everything. We know the heading, but... In the event we want to use some kind of, we want to use terrain as well, we, we're going to have to orient this map north. So right. where is north? Well, we have a compass. Right. So all we have to do is line it up with the map, and then once the north-seeking arrow is facing straight up north, right. we know that this map is oriented north right here. Gotcha. It's oriented north, and we're going basically that way. Cool. Right on. Let's move out. For more basic skills, field craft, and basic dude stuff, you got to join my Pat Mac Keep the Blaze Live coaching squad on Patreon. We do a live stream every week and a tier one Zoom every two weeks. The best part about the squad is we have a very eclectic group with a very wide skill set range. We run a private Facebook page that I administrate so there's no peripheral douchebaggery. So I hope to see you there. Link is in the description. Rock and roll, baby.